Welcome. We discuss here a few crypto systems. Cryptology is a branch of applied mathematics where the math is accessible. This has also purpose. The security depends on basic mathematical principles and so produce trust. Nobody accepts security by obscurity. Our first example is the Polybius cipher. The alphabet is encoded in a 25 square array. Now every letter becomes a pair of numbers. The letter O, for example, is encoded as 34. The word history is encoded into a sequence of numbers, 23, 24, 43, 44, 45, 42, and 54. Also the pig pen cipher has the advantage that one can reconstruct it easily from memory because it is so well known and just a substitution cipher, it's probably one of the worst ciphers which exist. It is still historically interesting as it has been used already during the Crusades between 1000 and 1200. The word uh, skittily comes from Greek and means cylinder or stick. It is geometry that scrambles the text. Wrap a leather strip, write, it, write on it and then transmit the strip only. It appears in many books on ciphers. Thomas Kelly, a historian from Minnesota in the, in the article to the left, argues that the skittily was not used in Sparta and contrary to what many sources claim. In the middle, a book of Martin Gardner, to the right, a cryptology text of Laffin from the 70s where the skittily appears. The concept of scrambling text using physical rearrangement is used still today when using shredders. It appears also in the movie Contact. We see here where extraterrestrial sends a blueprint for a machine, which is an essential idea. Yes, it's an essential course. idea of the skittily to use geometry. The Caesar cipher is used for hiding answers to questions or preventing to spell a word. It's easy to break by statistical analysis. Here's an example with the original Caesar shift by three. The encryption is easy to crack. Decoder rings or disks were used to encrypt or decrypt. To the right we see a reflection permutation. The symmetry line is the divider between U and T. And to the left we see a sample or disk which allows to do translation of the alphabet. A bit better is the Trithemius cipher. Since the alphabet is shifting each time after each letter, the frequency analysis appears to be broken. It's still possible, however, by just using a linear subset of the text. So here is an example. The first letter H becomes H. Now the second letter I becomes J. It's using the second alphabet. The third letter S becomes U, etc. We are just going through every time we use a, a new alphabet, which is shifted by one. So this is the original text of the monk Johannes Trithemius, who lived from 1462 to 1516. We see the front page to meet the first page and page 555, which contains this table. The Viginaire cipher refines the polyalphabetic idea by adding a keyword, which tells how to scramble the alphabets. It's just not the simple shift each time, but uses a word. So here's an Im implementation used to be during a civil war, but it, it has a, a, it's a Trithemius cipher, which when used with a keyword becomes the Viginaire cipher. And then this can be refined even more by uh, using permutations in each of the alphabets, arbitrary permutations and not just translated versions of the alphabet. This is the Jefferson disk. Uh, it's a generalization of the Viginaire idea. So it was used until the 1940s. The Ottendorf cipher uses a book or text to encode the message. So for the beast treasure riddle, which we will just use as an illustration, the middle uh, beel text has been cracked with the running key had been the United States Declaration of Independence. So here we see the, to the left, the declaration and then the numbers 115, 73, 24, etc. tell which word we have to pick from that text. For example, 115 is the 115th word, which is instituted, which has uh, gives us an I. The 73rd letter is whole, which gives us an H, and so on. So we go through the whole text and we see so the, that second Beale text starts with, I have deposited, and that's a treasure 
so it doesn't tell in that text what the treasure is, but the first and third of the Beale texts have not yet been cracked. The Ottendorf cipher appears Somebody often in pop culture, magic like are. here in National Treasure. It's an Ottendorf cipher. That's right. Ah, oh, okay. In the Enigma encryption, it's again a little bit a refined version. The alphabet substitution moves over time in a more complicated way. So there are three rotors and the rotors turn, but then the once the turn is done, the second rotor starts to turn, etc. So here is an example. We type in history, 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 and uh, see then the, what happens. Also here there are a couple of five to six movies which feature that. It was, has been used in World War II and then was cracked uh, by Polish cryptologists who found work weaknesses in the code, especially due to procedural problems or observing cycles. And then one has been able to decrypt it effectively at Bletchley Park, also with the help of computers. The bomb, Alan Turing, was involved there. So here's an example where it appears in the movies. The current <clears throat> passes from the keyboard to the lamps by way of the rotors and the plugs. And every time you press a key, it changes the path of the current. Press the same key ten times, it comes out ten different ways in the lamp board. You never know which letters will light up. It's simply brilliant. While the data encryption standard is no more used, there are follow-up systems which are very we use very similar techniques. The system allows for fast encryption, like full disk encryption, for example, on, on, on your laptop. <clears throat> so here's a, a basic scheme of this or a chunk of 64 bits is split in half, then each part is scrambled using an external key a couple of times and then put together again. One can reverse this picture and get the input back. So it's a block cipher. The idea has been pioneered by Claude Shannon already. And uh, the this scrambling is map is called the Feistel map. It's essentially a kind of a twist map, chaotic map, discrete chaotic map. And uh, it's vulnerable to attacks, but uh, there, were ref there are refined versions like uh, Blowfish, which has been uh, designed by Bruce Schneider. It's a larger, essentially, it's just la taking larger keys and uh, also changing the, when you change the, the scrambling, the advanced encryption standard, for example, which is used for uh, modern disk encryption, for example, uses uh, uh, instead of Faisal networks, Riendel networks, you know, named after two Belgian cryptologists working on blocks of 128 bits. Diffie-Hellman is a public key exchange procedure with security uses elementary number theory and is based on the difficulty to compute the discrete log of a number modulo a prime. So here it goes like that, a public prime and an additional number a are given. Everybody knows that. Anna chooses x, only she knows. Now Anna computes a to the x and Bob uh, also chooses a letter uh, and a number y and uh, uh, computes a to the y. And their common key is x to the y, which is y to the x. So x is that a to the x, y is a to the y. And uh, uh, just by basic exponential rules, z, they have a common key. But only they know the key is z. Eve, who can listen to x and y, kind of to, to the communication, cannot figure it out. And the difficulty is the discrete log problem. Here are with Whitfield Diffie and Martin Hellman. Bob wants to send uh, something uh, to Anna. Anna can publish a product of two large numbers, two large primes, n is equal to pq and an integer a, which is smaller than p minus one, q minus one, and ask Bob to send his message, message as follows. So Bob has to compute x to the a, modulo n, and uh, now uh, Anna can reconstruct x by just taking that, what she receives, take it to the power p, b where B, A, B is equal to 1 modulo P minus 1, Q minus 1. That uses Fermat's theorem, a generalization of Fermat's theorem to products of two primes. <clears throat> so here is the scheme. So Bob has the text X, computes Y, which is X to the A. Eve can listen to that, but can from that not uh, derive X. <clears throat> and uh, Anna then uh, can uh, reconstruct X by taking it to the power B. She can find B, but also Eve is in, cannot find B without factoring 
the large number n. So these are the, these are the RSA, Fox, Ron, Rivers, Adi, Shamir and Leonard Edelman. So when they were in the 70s and now in modern times. The difficulty is well, factoring believed to be a difficult problem, but who knows, it has there inspired already pop culture 30 years ago. Elegant. Like here in the movie Sneakers. No one has been able to accomplish such constructions yet. That's it. This is the end.